This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In the biggest display of athletic defiance for decades, football teams across the nation protested President Donald Trump after he attacked the NFL, NBA and some of their most popular athletes for daring to draw attention to racism and police violence by taking the knee during the national anthem. At a campaign rally in Huntsville, Alabama, Friday evening, Trump lashed out at players who've joined this growing protest movement that, well, in its latest incarnation, was started by the former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick against racial injustice, kneeling during the national anthem. Trump made the comments while stumping for Senator Luther Strange um, to replace Jeff Sessions in a close Republican primary in Alabama. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! You know, some owner's going to do that. He's going to say, that guy that disrespects our flag, he's fired. And that owner, they don't know it. They don't know it. They're friends of mine, many of them. They don't know it. They'll be the most popular person for a week. They'll be the most popular person in this country, because that's a total disrespect of our heritage. That's a total disrespect of everything that we stand for, okay? Trump's speech took place in the city of Huntsville, a couple hours from where Alabama's Governor George Wallace openly embraced segregation in his 1963 inaugural address. During his remarks, Trump urged football fans to turn off their TVs when athletes protest during the national anthem. But you know what's hurting the game more than that? When people like yourselves turn on television and you see those people taking the knee when they're playing our great national anthem. The only thing you could do better is if you see it, even if it's one player, leave the stadium. I guarantee things will stop. Things will stop. Just pick up and leave. Pick Trump's comments come immediately. Well, Trump's comments immediately drew outrage and criticism. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell said in a statement, quote, divisive comments like these demonstrate an unfortunate lack of respect. The NFL Players Association president, Eric Winston, said Trump's comments were, quote, a slap in the face to the civil rights heroes of the past and present. Former NFL wide receiver Anquan Bolden told ABC News he and other athletes are concerned about Trump's hate speech. I think the, the president's words are real divisive. Um, I don't like the, the hate speech that is coming out of his mouth. Neither do the players in the locker room. So I think as a league, we need to stand together and show that we're, we're all about uniting one another and, and not the divisive rhetoric that's coming out of the mouth of the president. Ahead of a series of NFL games Sunday, Trump again urged football fans to boycott NFL games unless clubs punish players who protest during the national anthem. He tweeted, if NFL fans refuse to go to games until players stop respecting our flag and country, you'll see change take place fast. Fire or suspend. NFL attendance and ratings are way down. Boring games, yes, but many stay away because they love our country. League should back U.S. Trump's comments sparked nationwide protests, with players on most teams participating in some form of protest ahead of Sunday games. NFL players who kneeled and locked arms during the national anthem included members of the Buffalo Bills, Denver Broncos, New Orleans Saints, Miami Dolphins, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Cleveland Browns, Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants. Super Bowl champions New England Patriots also protested, with white quarterback Tom Brady interlocking arms with teammates of color as others kneeled. Several players and staff from the Jacksonville Jaguars and Baltimore Ravens also knelt in defiance of a game in London. Journalist Sean King noted 27 players and staff from both teams participated in the protest, making it the most ever in one game, he wrote. And nearly the entire Pittsburgh Steelers team sat out the national anthem in the locker room ahead of their game against the Chicago Bears, who stood on the sidelines with their arms locked in solidarity.
Meanwhile, during Game 1 of the WNBA Finals, the Lynx linked arms during the national anthem, while the Sparks stayed in their locker room. The protest spread to baseball teams as well, with the Oakland Athletics' Bruce Maxwell becoming the first major league player to kneel during the national anthem on Saturday night. Maxwell was born on an Army base. His father is in the military. He told reporters he's, quote, kneeling for people that don't have a voice. And on Saturday, legendary musician Stevie Wonder joined protesting athletes by kneeling on stage before his performance at the Global Citizens Festival. Meanwhile, Trump also took aim at the NBA, rescinding an invitation to basketball champions the Golden State Warriors to visit the White House after the team's star player, Steph Curry, said he would not attend. Curry told reporters he and some of his teammates disagree with Trump and, quote, the things that he said and the things that he hasn't said in the right times. In response, Trump tweeted, quote, going to the White House is considered a great honor for a championship team. Steph Curry is hesitating, therefore. Invitation is withdrawn. This is Curry responding to Trump's Twitter attack. It's kind of, I mean, surreal to be honest. I mean, just I don't, I don't, I don't know, you know, why he feels the need to target certain individuals, other, you know, rather than others. I have an idea of why, but um, it's it's kind of a, it's just kind of beneath, though, I think, a, a leader of a country to to go that route. Um, it's not what leaders do, so. Like I said, we have amazing people in this league that have spoken up on both sides of the, talk, uh, of the conversation. Um, the amount of support and encouragement I saw this morning um, around the league was unbelievable from all types of players. The Golden State Warriors say they'll visit Washington, D.C., but skip the White House and instead, quote, celebrate equality, diversity and inclusion, unquote. Trump's tweet also drew a sharp rebuke from NBA superstar LeBron James, one of the nation's best-known athletes. He tweeted at Trump, quote, "'You bum, Stephen Curry already said he ain't going, so therefore ain't no invite. Going to White House was a great honor until you showed up.'" James posted this video on his Instagram account on Saturday. As of Sunday evening, it had been viewed over two million times. You look at him. Um, kind of asking, you know, the NFL owners to to get rid of players off the field because uh, they're, you know, exercising their rights, and, and that's not right. And then, you know, when I wake up, I see that, you know, a colleague of mine has been uninvited of something that he said he didn't even want to go to in the first place, um, you know, to the White House. Um, you know, that's just something I can't stand for, man. And we got, you know— you know, Jamil Hill and Colin Kaepernick and, you know, all these people are speaking up and, you know, it's for the great of cause. It's for it's for us to all come together. It's not about a division. It's not about dividing. We as American people need to actually just come together even more stronger, man, because this is a very critical time. And me being a, in the position I am, I had to voice this to y'all. So uh, love y'all, man. Basketball star LeBron James. Meanwhile, Sunday, even some of the anthem singers participated in the protest during the NFL games. In Motown, before the Lions game at Ford Field, singer Rico Lavelle performed the Star Spangled Banner, pausing between Home of the and Brave to drop to his right knee and raise his left hand in a fist a move that recalled the Black Power salute of U.S. Olympians John Carlos and Tommy Smith at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. When we come back, from break, we'll be joined by three guests, Dr. Harry Edwards, Professor Emeritus of Sociology, University of California, Berkeley, advisor to Colin Kaepernick. Um, we'll also be speaking with sports writer Dave Zirin. And we'll be speaking with uh, former NFL star Dante Stallworth. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute. 
This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In the biggest display of athletic defiance in years, sports teams across the nation, football, baseball and basketball, protested President Donald Trump after he attacked the NFL, the NBA and some of their most popular athletes for daring to draw attention to racism and police violence. We go now to get response. We're joined by three people. In Palo Alto, California, we're joined by Dr. Harry Edwards, professor emeritus of sociology at University of California, Berkeley, author of a number of books, including The Revolt of the Black Athlete, reissued this year for its 50th anniversary edition. He was the architect of the 1968 Olympic Project for Human Rights, longtime staff consultant with the San Francisco 49ers, where he worked with Colin Kaepernick. In Washington, D.C., we're joined by Dante Stallworth, a sports commentator, former NFL player, who spent 10 years in the league, and also with us, Dave Zirin, a sports editor for The Nation magazine. His latest piece for the NFL, it was Choose Your Side Sunday. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Harry Edwards, let's begin with you. Have you seen anything like this in one day yesterday, what happened across this country and beyond? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, in the 1960s, uh, you had uh, pockets of athletes uh, who were engaged in political activity, some of the greatest sports personalities in the history of this country, but there was nothing on this scale. Uh, Mr. Trump has managed to precipitate something uh, that all of us activists and uh, intellectuals and media types would never have been able to achieve uh, through his ignorance, impulsiveness and vindictiveness. And so uh, what he has done, if anybody is leading this movement, it's Mr. Trump. He he has done more to put it on track and to move it forward than any other individual um, in, in history. I mean, President Trump has managed to do something that hasn't happened in quite a while, like um, Roger Goodell, the um, head of the NFL, being united with players. Um, talk about the response of the predominantly almost all white coaches, uh, the staff and the players. The, describe what we saw yesterday, from game to game, whether the players stayed back in the locker room for the anthem or went down on knee or locked arms, like Tom Brady, not usually seen in solidarity in this way, um, who talked about President Trump as being disrespectful. Well, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Trump, um, first of all, threw the owners under the bus. The owners who had been supporting him all of a sudden had to choose between him and the alt-right and that uh, uh, cheap applause that he got in Alabama and their own players. And they knew uh, from the moment that he made those statements, if they didn't stand up on the right side of these issues and join their players, they've signed their last free agent, they probably would have a great deal of difficulty signing their draft charges, and they would have uh, tremendous problems in their locker room because of the perception of what this of what the uh, the owner stood for uh, who took mr uh, Trump's advice again this demonstrates uh, mr Trump's utter ignorance of the dynamics of uh, athletics in this country particularly at the elite levels what holds teams together what motivates them uh, and uh, what uh, they consider to be important and critical in terms of their own uh, involvement in this uh, great American sports institution so again like in almost every other area that he has entered he he shows an abysmal ignorance of what uh, is important, what's going on, and he doesn't hesitate to throw even his closest associates and supporters under the bus. And I will say something else. We haven't heard the last of him uh, in the sports arena. And so we had uh, better uh, prepare ourselves uh, to respond uh, uh, objectively, uh, collectively, in unity, because going forward, he's going to continue this vindictive tirade that he's been on. I wanted to turn to the former um, uh, NFL head coach, like head of the New York Jets, Rex Ryan, well-known Trump supporter. Speaking Sunday on ESPN, Ryan blasted Trump for his criticism of NFL players, saying he's appalled by Trump's comments. Like, I'm pissed off, I'll be honest with you, you know, because I supported uh, Donald Trump. You know, I, I sat back and uh, when he asked me to uh, introduce him at a rally, you know, in, in Buffalo, I did that. But I'm reading these comments, and it, it's it's appalling to me. And I'm sure it's appalling to, to almost any citizen in our country. It should be. I mean, you know, calling our players, you know, SOBs and all that kind of stuff, 
That's not, the, that's not the men that I know. The men that I know in the locker room, I'm proud of. I'm proud to be associated with those people. And it's just so, you know, I apologize for being pissed off, but guess what? That's it. Because right away, I'm associated with what Donald Trump stands for and all that because, you know, I introduced him. I never signed up for that. I never wanted that. Dave Zirin, um, you've been covering uh, sports and protest for a long time. Um, describe everything that we saw you say. I mean, we're not only talking about the NFL, NBA, cheerleaders, the actual anthem singers themselves, WNBA as yep. well, women's basketball. Yep. First and foremost, Amy, I just want to say what an honor it is to do this show with Dr. Harry Edwards. It's impossible. He said it's impossible to think about this moment happening without Donald Trump. I think it's impossible to see this moment happening without the work of Dr. Harry Edwards over the last five decades. Um, I will say this. Donald Trump thought he knew what he was doing in Huntsville, Alabama. He has a tremendous ability to speak to the worst instincts of his audience. And I'm sure in his lizard brain, he looked at that audience of senior citizens, white senior citizens council in Alabama and said to himself, you know what? I think that going after young black men will be a big win. And that's what he does. He goes after people of color. He goes after women. He goes after people that his base will celebrate their destruction. And yet what he did not understand, maybe because he never played the game of football, he did not understand that in football locker rooms, they have what Seattle Seahawk Michael Bennett calls a brotherhood. And brotherhood could be seen as another word for solidarity. And it's kind of like a Spartacus thing, like an injury to one is an injury to all kind of thing. And so you think about what Donald Trump said at that rally and what NFL players and owners heard. You got to take in the whole thing of what he said. First and foremost, he called the players uh, SOBs, and he used the B word, and that's going after players' mothers, and you just do not do that. Second, he went after their livelihoods, saying that they should be fired. Third of all, he went after their freedoms, their right to dissent. And it also has to be said that Donald Trump, because he doesn't know the game, did not understand that the players who have been dissenting, and I'm talking about people like Malcolm Jenkins, Michael Bennett, they're not just individuals. They're not just people who are sitting during the anthem. They are people who are considered leaders in locker rooms, the most respected people in the National Football League. So he's going after people who a lot of these coaches love. They love having these guys in their locker room because they're some of the most thoughtful people that they have. And so what Donald Trump spurred is remarkable. And I'd be remiss, Amy, if I did not read for your audience, just so people know how deep the politics of what we saw Sunday was, the statement made by the Seattle Seahawks and their refusal to come out for the national anthem. It's brief and it's worth reading. This is what they said. They said, we will not stand for the injustice that has plagued people of color in this country. Out of love for our country and in honor of the sacrifices made on our behalf, we unite to oppose those that would deny our most basic freedoms. We remain committed in continuing to work towards equality and justice for all. We have reached a point where protesting the anthem is an act that actually demands more unity than whatever it is that Donald Trump is saying from his bully pulpit. I wanted to go to Michael Bennett uh, himself, a Seattle Seahawk, NFL star, appeared on Democracy Now! a few months ago. And I asked him about um, NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick's decision to protest against racial oppression and police brutality by taking the knee during the pregame national anthem. When he took that knee, it, it just it just made me realize that, you know, when he did that and the way that he touched made people speak around the world about this, it was like, wow, athletes really do have this platform that a lot of people just 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 want to hear. And when he made that decision to do that, I think it changed a lot of lives. I think it, it brought out some ugliness in people, but it also brought some brought out some beauty in some people. And I think um for us, for me personally, it just challenged me to be to even you know join him and try to make it try to make everything in his message more make it make it where people understand it and they want to be a part of it where young kids are speaking about it too. So that's Seattle Seahawk Michael Bennett speaking to us in February. Now, Dave Zirin, I wanted to ask you 
about the history of the playing of the national anthem. It wasn't always like this, was it? Weren't the teams usually in their locker rooms? Did this have to do with payment that the Pentagon made to the NFL to start recruiting more people, because young people watch football? Oh, Amy, playing the national anthem and having the teams line up before games, it has a long and hallowed history that goes back to the days of Jersey Shore and Justin Bieber. I mean, we're talking 2009. It, I mean, Fast and Furious 4 came out in 2009. That's how long uh, players have lined up for the anthem. And yes, it comes out of a partnership between the Department of Defense and the National Football League. Everything you see at games uh, for years, until it was uncovered by Senator Jeff Flake from Arizona, uh, everything you saw and for John years— And John McCain, like, right? And John McCain, yes. Uh, and showing it in, uh, like, showing, like, the salute to the troop moment and, and, and all, all of these uh, spectacles, they really were about recruitment for the armed forces, and they paid tens of millions of dollars to the National Football League to do these kinds of events. Uh, which speaks to, I think, th this, this partnership that exists and how patriotism exists um, in these events. This is not some long tradition. I mean, this is something that's ver a very short tradition and one that was absolutely geared with post-9-11, war on terror, concern about the recruitment levels for the armed forces, and seeing the NFL as a way to shore up those numbers and paying billionaires money to make this a reality. And, yes, this was only—this was something also that was hidden. It was discovered by the investigation of those Arizona senators. And I think that sort of gives the game away as far as what all this is about. I mean, Trump speaks about it as if it is this kind of long, hallowed tradition of players standing at attention for the anthem, when it's actually something very recent and, and, and very, I think, just monetary um, in terms of the NFL's perspective. But, but, uh, but, was but, that but, Harry Edwards? But, you know, the—uh-huh. Go ahead. But, you know, the—, the it, it's not about the anthem. This, this yes. is the point that we don't want to get hung up on. Uh, what Colin did was not an attack on the anthem. Uh, mm -hmm. It was not an attack on the military. It was not even an attack on police. It was uh, an attack on injustice. And uh, he was no more against the anthem than he was against the soldiers who are uh, in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Uh, and so we don't want to get too tied up on uh, the uh, anthem and its place in sports and so forth. We want to look at the issues. Anything else is a red herring. That is what Colin was about. It's not even about Colin getting a quarterback job again. Uh, that's like saying that we should mo that uh, Montgomery, uh, the Montgomery uh, bus boycott movement should have been about Rosa Parks getting her seat back. It has to be about things much broader than that. And so we want to understand the history and dynamics uh, of um, the politics of the national anthem and how they're being played by people such as Trump. But we don't want to lose sight about what this struggle is about. It's about mm -hmm. injustice in American society. Dr. Absolutely. Harry Edwards, you are certainly speaking um, from uh, personal experience. You're an advisor to Colin Kaepernick. And for people who haven't been following the whole controversy around him after he first uh, took the knee uh, uh, as a 49er star, now not being able to get a job. I mean, I'm talking to you from New York, where a thousand people came out protesting outside of NFL headquarters. Um, Talk about Colin's response right now um, to what we're seeing, the, the mass protests across the country. Colin Kaepernick uh, is getting ready to play football. Uh, I think that that has been his, um, uh, his commitment, all of this discussion about whether he wants to play G's, uh, is he willing to offer an apology? An apology for what? Uh, he plays football. Uh, he is an, uh, an activist uh, in uh, the struggle for human rights and justice in American society. Those two things are not contradictory. And so this notion that uh, perhaps he doesn't want to play anymore, perhaps he wants to be uh, an, a civil rights leader and say, I mean, those two things are not contradictory. contradictory. So, yep. uh, a lot of that is simply rationalization for a reactionary culture, uh, where owners, for whatever reason, uh, are reluctant uh, to um, give Colin Kaepernick uh, the opportunity to play. The very idea that there are 96 quarterbacks 
in this league, including 32 clipboard holders, who are so much better than Colin Kaepernick, who took his team to uh, uh, three conference championships and a Super Bowl, uh, that they are so much better than Colin Kaepernick that he does not even deserve a chance for a tryout, is ludicrous. This is something that the league, along with siding with their players within the very near future, uh, is going to have to correct. Colin mm -hmm. Kaepernick uh, belongs uh, at least uh, on uh, the field uh, holding a clipboard. You can't make any other argument, uh, especially given some of the performances that have shown up in the first three weeks uh, by quarterbacks in this league. So that's a challenge that the league is still confronted with. But what Colin Kaepernick is doing is preparing to play football, because that's one of the things uh, that he does.